one of the most common questions I get on YouTube comments is whether shedding of the vaccine material is possible during sex. It's so common that I thought maybe I'll do a quickie video, no pun intended, about this topic because as far as I know, oh and by the way my name is Dr. Michaela Rush of Genomics. as far as I know there is no science uh, answering that specifically when it comes to um, COVID-19 vaccines and I don't think there is much science also when it comes to any vaccines about shedding. Now shedding as far as my understanding goes, which is limited on this topic, I haven't spent too much time on it, but I have done a very big series on specifically to look on the possibility of shedding, so check those out. But as far as I, con uh, I understand is that shedding is believed to be a legitimate concern for gene therapy products. Now the interesting part is that if you look at mRNA vaccines, the way they are designed, you could constitute that as gene therapy product. Hence, asking whether shedding via any of the mRNA vaccines products is possible is a legitimate question. We just don't have any science investigating it, so we don't have any answers to this. So as far as science is concerned right now, this means that um, shedding is not real. The, when I was looking into that information and I looked at that, it looked like shedding could be possible potentially via breath because we do know we can shed exosomes via breath and exosomes think of it are as tiny miniature elements of your cells and we also do know that it's possible to have spike protein in exosomes and we have seen that in blood circulation so then it's not a too grand of a leap to think to think is it possible to ask a question is it possible to shed exosomes with a spike protein via your breath and then let's hypothet hypothetically assume that it is for just sake of argument, just use your imagination and think that it is, then the way I see it, if it would be, and I think that's most likely what it would be shed, is the spike protein via exosome, via breath, if anything, via the mRNA vaccines, so it would be the product of the vaccines that could be shed, not the actual material of the, that makes up the vaccine, then if you're worried about the spike protein exposure via shedding during sex, well, if it's possible via breathing, then clearly if you're, if you're participating in that activity, you're going to be in close proximity that you're going to be exposed to each other's breath. Hence, to me, it's actually a moot point whether any of the vaccine materials could be shed via any of the bodily fluids that you might be exchanging during sex. Mm, does it really matter? Let's say, assume that's possible. Well, okay, we don't know yet maybe it is, maybe it's not, then let's assume it's not possible. But if breathing is possible, then you could still be exposed to the spike protein. And then the last question I would say, does it really matter? Because any of us could be exposed to the spike protein at any point from the virus anyway. Still infection by the virus is obviously very possible, very possible reality. So to me, it's potentially irrelevant. Now let's assume another question. What if it's possible to shed the actual genetic material of the vaccines via intercourse um, fluids that are exchanged, whether it be sweat or, or well, intercourse fluids, well, that's another story. And so far, the only element of science, as far as I understand, that have suggested that any of that is possible well, is the very limited published evidence that suggested that potentially it is possible to shed mRNA vaccine genetic material via breast milk. Well, if it's possible to shed it by a breast milk, then it's also, to me, not a grand leap to suggest that it could be possible via other fluids. But then, remember, that material will also not last forever. Everything in your body will be eventually recycled, and that genetic material would also be eventually recycled, although it could potentially last much, much longer than, say, RNA that we produce inside our cells for um, production of proteins than the vaccinal mRNA because it's made differently. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I hope that answers and alleviates your questions and alleviates your worries. To me, it doesn't seem to really matter because even if it was possible, well, what can you do about it? Not much. Bye everyone.